What's up guys, Tire Kickers here, and we have some very exciting news for today's video. As you can see behind me, the supercharged E39 is finally home, and we wanna share some of our initial impressions. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and enjoy the rest of the video. God. There's no traction There's back there. none whatsoever. So yeah, that's a big thing, is gonna be new tires. Oh yeah. How old are these tires? They're probably two and a half, three years old. Yeah. You got what, Continental? Yeah, DWSs. DWSs. And your, what do you want it to go up to? Uh, well, these are 275, 3519s. But we're going to have to go to the Mickey Thompson ET Super Streets for traction. Right. Uh, and that'll either be a 285, 3519, or a 305, 3519. Okay. So I guess explain why we've got the AC full blast right now so that everyone knows why a little loud in there. AC right noise, yeah. So we're we actually have a, a killer chiller. We're not running a uh, a stock heat exchanger that you would find on the CTSVs or the Camaro ZL ones. So rather than the heat exchanger, which still runs the the, the supercharger coolant fluid through the heat exchanger, it's relying on outside ambient air to cool that supercharger coolant, so that it, by the time it gets to the supercharger hat, it's cooling down that uh, charged air going into the motor. So the killer chiller takes AC pressure, so I'm running my AC fluid through a, the high pressure line and a suction line through the chiller, and it's cooling down the supercharger coolant. Well, at this point, it's about uh, just above freezing temperatures, so the coolant is always cold. Rather than having to put a 10 pound bag of ice at the drag strip and run through that bag of ice and get melted in a matter of seconds. This is always running, but the AC has to run. So the theory is that the minimal drag that the AC is putting on the car is overridden by the amount of horsepower that can be created because the ambient temperatures of the supercharged air are a lot lower than they would be with just a standard heat exchanger. So with that, you can actually add more time and get more power out of the car and never have to worry about detonation. So uh, this car here, we're, our goal is to get to 800 rear wheel horsepower, which is going to be close to, well, 950 at the crank. Uh, so we'll see if we get there. Uh, if we end up shy, no big deal. As you can tell on the video that uh, traction is going to be the major, major issue. It's second gear, it's spinning as it's accelerating. Yep. And it'll do that in third and fourth. God. So it's laying down some serious horsepower right now, but that the heart of the whole system to keep detonation at bay is that killer chiller. So you got a 160 degree thermostat? 160 degree thermostat, but it's running at about 200 degrees because all that heat. Right. It's probably it's probably sitting down about 195 right now, even with the 163 thermostat. Right. If the sucker's just wide open or upside down. So the cooling of this motor with all the heat it's generating is gonna be the key part, man. So I've got every fan running. I got the pusher fan through the condenser. I've got both fans pulling for Yeah, so you gotta tell the three fans. Three fans that are running full blast right now. And the biggest thing with the supercharger is, like you said, the temperatures and pressures, making sure everything's in in line. And right now, that's these shakedown runs are intended to make sure there's no leaks, make sure all the pressures and temperatures are where they need to be before it go, goes to the tuner, so we're not backtracking and trying to redo work if we find a problem when it does get to the tuner. So, yeah, rather than going to the tuner five times, I'd like to go once and get it all done at the same yeah. time. Cause we're gonna do the E9, we're gonna do the 93 octane tune first, and that's the killer chills guy. We're really working for that. And then uh, once that tune's done, we tune for E85, and uh, that's where the horsepower is gonna come in. That's where we're gonna look to make all the power. So the car's running a, right now a single Hellcat fuel pump. Uh, it's a Walbro uh, 285, and I've got a second Walbro 285 that uh, we're gonna run as a secondary stand standalone pump. When boost comes on, it'll kick in so we don't lose fuel pressure. So how would you compare the LS, just the simple LS3 naturally aspirated versus the supercharger? Well, with the tune there, we had about 480 
real, real horsepower when it was all said and done with a tune on 93 octane. Uh, that was a lot of fun. So we had that, that naturally aspirated motor for two years, shaking down all the kinks, make sure there's no problems with anything. And then uh, before I attempted to put the supercharger on. This was always the end goal. This was the end goal, yeah. The root style blower on these uh, on these Eaton superchargers, it's the four lobe helical coil twist to the lobes. And that root blower, that power and torque comes in hard. Right. And how much boost are you posting up on the Well, right now we're running, uh, I haven't got into the thing. I've got a 9.17 inch lower pulley, a 2.5 inch grip tech upper pulley. So we're, we're, we should be maxing out at about 16 pounds of boost. And we haven't even got to 10 pounds of boost yet with it spinning the tires. So, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, we haven't even tapped the power potential with this car. It's going to be a little bit of tuning and alert. Well, one, learning how to redrive this car because I've owned this car since 2002. And uh, I ran, put 240,000 miles on the 4.4 liter V8. And rather than spend 10 grand to rebuild the 4.4, we went with the LS3 route. And uh, I haven't looked back. No. It has never been. Jesus. God. Jesus. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Imagine what it'll be like when it does happen. When, when it actually does hook. Yeah, Holy when it has sticky rubber crap. back here. Because it's just all over here, back here, and it's that is tire squealing. insane, man. Yeah. That is insane. You know, it, it's a, to put this in perspective, so I've driven the Lamborghini Huracan at, on the track, and uh, so we did the, that that uh, supercar race a bit, and I'd driven the, the Huracan. Now that's a 600 horsepower car, all-wheel drive, and that's a different way to drive too. This car pulls so much harder than that Lamborghini. Really? Holy crap! <laughs> about 12 pounds of boost. Look how much horsepower we're leaving on the ground. I know. Are you, in, are you, do you have your foot to the floor? Or are you? Well, I'm, I can barely, I'm at, it's about three, half to three quarter throttle and it's really? going, man. It's just, it's just ripping. Yeah. I think that, say it's a total different way to redrive the car now. Exactly, because, yeah. The turbo boost comes on a little bit different. This roots blower, the turd, the power, that grunt of, of, of freaking torque is right there, man. Yeah. It is just, just a, Half a throttle away, yeah. That's no lag, right? No, there's no lag. It, that boost comes on, it goes, man. Wow. It's kind of insane, dude. You should hear it outside. It is so loud. <laughs> Still got six mufflers to try to keep the sound at bay. I mean, where it's right. not stupid loud. I mean, Even the one thing that you see a couple of the Mustangs driving around, they got their exhaust is so loud. They want to be NASCAR or they're a pickup truck. I, I don't, I don't get it. Right. Uh, I wanted to be an, I wanted it to be an aggressive sound, but also Not didn't, overbearing. didn't drive me nuts while I was driving down the yeah. tollway. It's not droning on and on. Yeah, it's and just, honestly, inside it's not that bad. No, like, it's not in, in the cabin. It's not. No. And you know, once once I rerouted the exhaust this time and I wrapped. So one of the things that we did on this time on the exhaust over the NA is I redesigned the exhaust again to really bring the muffler and the pipes back through the center of the car basically like the stock BMW where the heat shielding is. So, and what I did there is from the headers back, we wrapped with the titanium header wrap, we wrapped the complete exhaust all the way back to the back of the car to the rear end differential, just past the differential. And then I wrapped the mufflers with uh, an asbestos aluminum heat shielding as well. We're trying to keep the heat in the exhaust and out of the car as much as possible because with the supercharger it's really going to be insane so i can already tell the sides of the tunnel are so so much cooler now you know the, the the unfortunate part is i've i've only been able to get about a gallon of coolant for this supercharger in the whole system man this e39 there's you're limited on space in so many spots and i've got stuff jammed everywhere you can because i wanted it to be a very clean install I wanted it to be, when you pop the hood, it's not look like a jumbled mess of somebody on a weekend with a hacksaw and a yeah. crescent wrench with a town. So it's nicely done under the hood. You can see the picks. Um, you know, I could, I really, really, really wanted a five inch intake tube, but there was nowhere to put it. 
I got I barely got a four and a half inch intake tube into this car uh, from where I could put it without it rubbing the hood. So uh, right now it's four and a half unless I can find out some other way to put it. Get five inch because that supercharger is completely ported. The, the, the body has been ported. All the inside the uh, runners inside the uh, supercharger body, we bulletized all the bosses where the fuel injector uh, reside. So they've been bulletized. Anything that reduced turbulence in the intake portion as it, before it enters the heads. And then the uh, the whole snout has been opened up to 102 millimeters. And I mean, you can shove your fist down, it's so yeah. big. Uh, so it can really breathe. And uh, we needed that along with the big, big, big injectors. So we're running injector dynamic 1050s X's on this car right now, and that may not be enough. We may have to roll up to the uh, injector dynamics 1300s, but those injectors are $1,700 just for the injectors. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. And see, like, and honestly, not getting on the throttle, you know, core throttle, it's docile like just a regular, like it was when it was naturally aspirated. Right. But man, as soon as you tip in the throttle, get in the boost. Woo, look out. Yeah. We're super stoked with how the shakedown runs have been going, and although there's still some work that needs to be done, we have a lot of content planned for this car. Drop a comment down below if you have any questions for us, and while you're down there, slap the like and the subscribe button so you can help us grow this channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.